I bought every single NVIDIA RTX 3000 GPU and you're not gonna believe what I learned. By the end of the video, you're gonna know some really interesting things about these GPUs that may help make your decision if you're looking to buy this generation of RTX 4000 or these guys RTX 3000. Let's start with the RTX 3060. This guy has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. That's the most interesting thing about it. Well, and aside from the fact it's one of the cheapest of the next generation GPUs, GPUs when RTX 3000 came out. 12 gigabytes of VRAM, hmm, that doesn't make too much sense. The 3080 Ti has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Even the 4070 Ti, which is an $800 GPU, also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This is a really weird one. Nvidia seems to have made a little marketing play here that people looking for a 3060 would see that number and probably against AMD's GPUs would think that it's at least a pretty good deal, but don't be fooled. That's going to be one of the major things that I learned compared to the 3060 Ti, which is the second GPU that we're talking about. It's not really that consequential. The big VRAM number usually helps a lot in gaming. If you're doing like 4K ray tracing, if you're going to be using the 3060, most likely you're going to be playing that 1080p, maybe stretching it to 1440p. And if you like GPUs, remember to subscribe. It'll make me pretty happy, almost like hugging these GPU boxes. Which one of these two would you choose? any day of the week 3060 ti the 3060 ti is basically like a 3070 but it's a little bit cut down while a 3060 is going to be definitely a step down the rtx 3060 is actually a really important gpu it still sells really well today look at these numbers from mind factory in germany this gpu was the second best selling here compared to the rtx 4070 ti another interesting fact about the rtx 3060 it never came in the founders edition aib partners like evga press f in the chat they will make the third party coolers and that's the only flavor of 3060 you can get 3060 ti however will come in the Founders Edition cooler. But remember, you still have to be careful in the small build and make sure you have good airflow because these small GPUs with only like one or two fans can get really loud and they have small coolers. The 3070 is $499 and it's gonna beat the 2080 Ti, which at the time was $1199. There was a running joke that people were gonna sell their 2080 Ti's for $500 in order to get this guy. As we know, that didn't really work out all that well due to the great GPU shortage of 2021. So this guy shot back up to like $1,300 during the mining craze in 2021. That's another fact that's not that fun for it. It was one of the most sought after GPUs at the time. This is a really nice sweet spot. You can definitely find them well taken care of for under $400. Of course, they did a slight upgrade to it, which is gonna be the 3070 Ti. And of course, it's gonna you know have a little bit more power draw. It's gonna be a little bit noisier, especially some of these founder edition models. Models. In my opinion, I still love the design of the Founder Edition models, and they all, of course, have that proprietary little cable connector. You're not going to be able to just plug in like two PCIe 8 pin connectors, but still, that's going to make for some like unsightly cable management, unless you get like a custom cable from Cable Mods or something like that. It's actually still a really good GPU. And here's a big fact it has a 256 bit memory bus. Why is that important? The 4070 Ti only has a 192 bit memory bus. Sometimes it's kind of the go-to if you can't find an RTX 3080, which is going to be basically after the 3070, probably the most popular RTX 3000 GPU. Famously, this came out for $699, even though we never found it for that price, which is actually pretty funny. And it also came out with 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which some people thought was a little bit too limited for this price class of GPU. Look at the 4070 Ti with only 12 gigabytes. That's not really that much better. If we could stay at $699 for that class of GPU, gamers would be extremely happy. But unfortunately, the 3080 is the GPU that really caused all of these pricing issues. I remember seeing it for as much as $2,100 during the crypto mining craze in 2021. And then of course, Nvidia infamously released the 3080 12 gigabyte version. What's important about this one? Not more performance, but more price, over $1,200 
which was an extremely intense increase from the $700 price. Of course, Nvidia just taking advantage of the GPU shortage. In my opinion, if you want to start to really step up your frame rates, you start to go back up a little bit to something like a 3080 Ti, especially at the used prices nowadays. You're going to get basically the 12 gigabytes of VRAM that the 3080 upgraded to, but a little bit faster performance. Keep in mind, between the 3080, 3080 Ti, and 3090, they're a lot closer this generation than the RTX 4000 GPUs are. We often see the 4090 way ahead of the 4080 in terms of benchmarks, but if we go back a generation, the 3080 wasn't like as far behind the 3090. So the 3080 Ti squeezes right there in the middle, and it has the same size cooler, especially with the Founders Edition, so you can actually fit it in various different cases. Of course, power draw is going to be more, so you do have to worry about heat and things like that. Of course, the 3090 was the GPU that really made a big impact when it came out. I don't think people thought it would because at $1499, it seemed to be really, really expensive, but it sold out really, really fast. I mean, look at the 4090 now. It's the one that's still sold out. So the 3090 was very popular. 24 gigabytes of VRAM is still amazing today, and that's basically what the 4090 has. So very incredible GPU. Keep in mind, one of the biggest things people learned about it was that the thermal pads really sucked, especially on the Founder Edition GPUs. A lot of people had to redo them because the GPUs were overheating. NVIDIA wasn't quite done with the 3090 and RTX 3000 series. They wanted to do one last GPU, and this one was kind of a big failure, the 3090 Ti. Yes, it's going to be the fastest RTX 3000 GPU that came out, but it also was $1999. Like, people really didn't want to buy it. This was the beginning of the end for GPU sales when the market started to go down, especially in early 2022. It quickly went down to like $1599 then eventually to 1099 and now famously the 4070 ti kind of competes against it a lot of the reviews were saying how the 4070 ti kind of beats a 3090 ti it's true in some cases but because of that vram limitation on the 4070 ti the 3090 ti is still better if the game you're playing especially 4k and you really want to max it out i would still prefer a 3090 ti over it because you're not going to be bottlenecked by that low 192 bit memory bus and of course if you need it for content creation 24 gigabytes of vram is definitely still the best remember you're not going to have dlss 3.0 that's the big thing that drives rtx 4000 but you're going to have basically every other nvidia goodie like you know ray tracing performance is going to be great you're going to have dlss 2.0 so that's some of the interesting things that i learned about rtx 3000 obviously it came at a time when gpus were very difficult to get and in my opinion people had a better opinion of these at the time than they do now of rtx 4000 the only new GPU now is the 4090 that people really like. It's not like the 3070 and 3080, which people absolutely loved. But then again, people couldn't get them. Overall, I think it's going to be remembered as a very frustrating time for gamers. Hopefully some of this information helped you making a decision if you're thinking of buying a GPU or were just curious. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.